everybody! Today I'm going to talk about the long-term effects COVID-19 could have on our mental health. Because I think we can all agree that this past year has been trying, anxiety producing, and at times depressing. And today's video is sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates. I know, I was as shocked as you. I was asked to create a video inspired by their 2021 annual letter in which Bill and Melinda Gates reflect on COVID-19 and suggest that among the rebuilding efforts that will need to happen everywhere, the world has an important opportunity to prepare a healthier, more equal future for all by focusing on two key areas, creating a more equitable response for the next pandemic and innovating and investing in pandemic preparedness. And what better way to prepare for a healthier future and other possible pandemics than to understand the mental health ramifications of this pandemic and ways in which we can heal from it. I just want to dive right in here. We have been held in our stress response, meaning fight and flight, for almost an entire year. Our stress response is supposed to be something that is short-lived. We identify a threat to our safety and our body readies us for action, either to fight or flight by releasing cortisol and adrenaline. Then we either fight or we run away. And our stress response cycle is complete. <sighs> we calm down and we feel okay. However, when the threat is an invisible virus that we can't really run from or fight in a real way, we freeze. When we don't have any other option and have to freeze, we don't get to complete the stress response. There isn't a release for our nervous system that has been queued up for action. So all that energy just runs through our body with no way to get out. Our stress response also affects our brain. It ignites our limbic system, which includes our amygdala, or what I like to call the fire alarm of our brain. When the amygdala is alerted, it overrides our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for organization, planning, and decision-making. Which makes sense, because if we're under attack or threatened in some way, we really don't need to think things through or thoughtfully plan things out or make sure we're working toward our goals. Instead, we need to be impulsive, reactive, and do first, think about it later. This is why in the last 12 or so months, many of us may have relapsed into drugs and alcohol, as well as self-injurious or eating disorder behaviors. We're stressed out and unable to think things through. The pandemic has in essence lowered our defenses and made us more susceptible to our impulses. All of this queued up energy can also cause us to feel more anxious, irritable, and angry. And I believe this is why more people are impatient, yelling and honking at strangers who don't drive, you know, right when the light turns green, or because we aren't leaving our homes as much, many people are shouting online, harassing others, buying into cancel culture, creating hateful content and comments, and spewing all of this upset onto unsuspecting passersby. As this persists, we can become exhausted by all of this hypervigilance and start to feel depressed by the ongoing upset and overwhelm that we feel. It can make our future look dull and unimportant. We can begin to feel hopeless. Now, I know by sharing all of this, I'm being a total downer, but I just wanted to put some context and potential explanation for all we've experienced in this past year. It's being continuously stuck in a state of fight, flight, freeze that has led researchers to find rates of anxiety, depression, suicide, PTSD, and substance abuse go up in 2020. Not to mention the number of patients and viewers who've struggled with an increase in urges to use eating disorder or self-harm behaviors. Now, I know all of this data is new, it's unchallenged, and incomplete because, frankly, we haven't had enough time to properly research anything. But I still think it's worth talking about, so that if you are struggling, you know that you're not alone. And there is a neurological reason why you're feeling that way. Sometimes it just helps me to know that there is an actual reason why I feel the way I feel. It, it's like validating to me in some way. But enough of the doom and gloom. Let's get into the good part. The ways that we can better cope with all that's going on. And the first tip I have is one way we can complete that stress response and pull ourselves out of that constant state of fight, flight, freeze. And we can do that by shaking it out. Now, if you're on TikTok, you know how many people are talking about this and trying it out. But trust me when I tell you that it actually helps. And the reason that it works is because of the research that psychologist Dr. Peter Levine did after seeing animals in the wild do full body shakes after escaping from a predator. 
he wondered if this shaking behavior could help humans in the way that it helped animals. So he researched it and found that it does. As a result, he created a type of therapy known as somatic experiencing, which operates on the belief that PTSD is born out of our freeze response. In order to unfreeze ourselves, we have to move our body and work to complete that stress response and give that energy an outlet. So get up, shake it out from the top of your head to the bottoms of your feet and notice if you feel a bit calmer, more focused or patient. It has really helped me survive this past year and hopefully it can give you another tool for your toolbox. Next up is to be curious. Too often we don't check in with ourselves or be curious about our thoughts and feelings. Instead, we just accept them as facts, which they are not. So instead of being on autopilot, wondering why we feel so terrible, pay attention. Think about the urges you're having and consider what you could be trying to communicate by doing that thing. Or you could consider what it is you're trying to numb out from. Taking some time to journal out all that's going on in our head and be curious as to why we think and feel the way we do can help us better understand why we may be reacting this way. Being curious does not mean judge. That's not helpful right now. Just learn about it. Learn about yourself. We are always changing and growing, so let's get to know us now in this terrible situation and recognize why we are acting the way that we are. And that rolls nicely into another one of my favorite tools, and that is the impulse log. These are great to use when we feel the urge to drink, use drugs, buy something, engage in eating disorder behavior or self-injurious behaviors, and much, much more. So get a piece of paper and write down these prompts. Make sure you leave yourself enough space to answer these questions. First question, what is the impulsive or self-destructive thought? What is it you want to do? Number two, the day and the time. This helps us see if there are certain days or times when we are more susceptible to these thoughts or urges. We can kind of find some patterns. Number three, where are you? Are you at home? Are you at work? This can also help us see if there are any patterns or specific places that are particularly triggering. Number four, what's the situation? Like what happened? Just the facts about it. Tell us what happened. Number five, what feelings are you having? And you can use a feelings chart here too, that can really help, but try to name at least two to three feelings. Number six, what would be the result of doing the impulsive thing? And just try to be as honest as you can here. Number seven, what are you trying to communicate with this behavior? I know I mentioned this a little bit in the previous tip, but it really helps here too. Sometimes it can just help us to consider what it is we're trying to express. These are coping skills and these behaviors have a reason behind them. Let's try to figure out what it is. Number eight, what did you end up doing? Or what action did you take? Did you do the thing that you wanted to do, like the impulse, or did you pick something else? And finally, number nine, what was the outcome? Even taking the time to fill this out can be enough time to make the impulse go away. But it also gives us more information about when and why we are triggered, which will help us prepare ahead for the next urge. And you can check out selfinjury.com for more info about this. They even have a great video explaining impulse logs and their uses as well. So you can hop over there. I'll link in the description. Another tip to help us feel better is to make time to safely connect with those you love. Social connection is incredibly soothing to our nervous system and can also pull us out of that stress response. If you want to read research about it, you can look up Dr. Stephen Porges and the polyvagal theory, which shows you the connection with others is both activating and soothing to our nervous system, which means it will help us feel calm while also keeping us motivated and active. In essence, spending time with loved ones helps us be our best self. So if you can, get tested, get vaccinated, or quarantine, and have some loved ones do the same so that you can all benefit from the much needed hugs, love, and conversation. If we've been feeling down or upset lately, laughs and smiles could be hard to come by which is why my final tip is to fake a smile or laugh. I know, it sounds crazy, and you'll probably feel silly doing it. When I tried to fake laugh, it forced me to actually laugh because the act of even doing that was just so ridiculous, so, so there's that. But research does show us that even fake smiles or laughs have the ability to improve our mood, lower stress, and even boost our immune system. Amazing, right? 
It tricks our brain into thinking that we're feeling better, which prompts it to release serotonin and dopamine, which are both feel-good neurotransmitters. So give it a try. Couldn't hurt, right? Let me know what you think. I do want to mention that if you are struggling to do what you need to do each day, or if you are thinking about suicide, please reach out to a professional in your area. There's also the crisis text line at 741741, and Samaritans is available in the UK, as well as many suicide prevention hotlines. Please reach out and speak up because with the right help, it can and will get better. And thanks again to Bill and Melinda Gates for sponsoring this video. Head over to gatesletter.com to read Bill and Melinda Gates' annual letter. This year, they are reflecting on the impacts of COVID-19 and how we can turn the hard lessons of this pandemic into a healthier, more equal future for all. The link is also in the description, so you can check it out there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.